I'm actually really curious, and I don't know the answer to this. Um, before um, you took my class, did you know anything? Had you even heard about Eurovision before? Um, no, not at all. Um, <laughs> I'm new this year, so um, I had no idea what kind of classes were going to be at the school. And I got signed up for Eurovision, and I had no idea what it was, and I didn't Google it, and I just waited until the first. So my name is uh, my name is Kevin. I am forty three, almost forty four years old, and I grew up in Ireland, but I am currently living in the United States. And I am working at a high school where I teach French, Spanish, and what I think is possibly the world's only Eurovision high school class. It's a class that I wrote, the course I wrote myself, the curriculum I developed um, from scratch and produced this wonderful, wonderful book, um, which the students have um, and they use it as a kind of workbook and resource. We look at war, um, both the First and Second World War and the Holocaust, which I think can't really understand Europe without understanding those or having some knowledge of those. And then we dive right in. We talk about um, Britain uh, in Eurovision and Brexit and how Britain's attitude towards Europe is reflected um, in their attitude in, towards Eurovision. We do a whole unit on soft power, um, a unit on Russia and Ukraine, which I'm constantly having to write and rewrite. Um, another unit on Sarajevo and the siege of Sarajevo. And we also have a unit on um, LGBTQ plus representation at Eurovision. And then we look at the sort of the future of Eurovision and, and Europe. And then we do all these little mini units on microstates. And I was also just interested in learning about other people's cultures in a different way than just like history. Yeah. It's just like recent history. And I don't know, it felt, it felt more interesting. And I think the reason that I wrote the course was because since being in the United States, as a language teacher, you know, I'm, I'm kind of introducing kids to culture and geography and history and all of these things and realizing that the students here seem to not know a whole lot about the world and they don't seem to really know where anything is and I don't think it's their fault I don't think that geography is really taught anymore so I wrote the course because I wanted kids to know about Europe um, because I miss it and I wanted them to know about Eurovision because it's amazing. And in the past few years we've been so concerned with our own politics and our own events that we haven't been able to connect with other parts of the world. Because Americans are very self-obsessed. Uh, we don't really care about anyone else. <laughs> I thought Eurovision would be a great way in to, to talk about um, some of these issues. Brexit, I actually was t teaching about Brexit this morning. It's super complex. But how great to be able to use Eurovision as a way into talking about some of these more complex, um, complex issues. Okay, definitely. It was fun to listen to all the music. I got to explore a country I'm more interested in and it like opened my mind to international politics rather than just the US. I realized I was on to something um, several years ago. This is before I even wrote the, the, the course. I realized I was onto something when I was talking about with, uh, talking about Eurovision with, with with my students, with my French class, and I introduced them to the songs that year. At, you know, at the end of every class, we would listen to a song. And I remember one day there were these two girls. This was in a school. It was a low-income urban school. Um, these two girls were leaving the classroom, and I overheard them. One of them turned to the other and said, "I really love Albania." And her friend was like, "Oh no, I I think I prefer Macedonia." And for me, I was just, it was this moment of like, I don't know, just this kind of thrill of like, I don't care. These kids don't have to know the capitals of these countries. They don't have to know facts and figures, but just the fact that they're acknowledging the existence of those countries, I will take as a win. Favorite song, go. Okay. Oh my gosh. Um, Austria 2003, the, I sent you an email about it. It is my favorite video on the internet. I actually know one, I know one of your answers already, but I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> Favorite song? Um, definitely eat your salad. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I have to say Waterloo. I'm a big fan of that. Waterloo. So keeping it classic with Waterloo, and I, I, I don't need to ask you, but I'm going to ask anyway. Stephanie. Huh. Why did you? I'm just curious. What was what was it about Stephanie? Because you you love that song. I just love the song. I don't know what it was, but um, 
it, it's a great it song. It is a good song. Later on that year, um, at the same school, I organized a, a watch party and I said to the kids, listen, I'm going to order a bunch of pizza. Just come after school if you want to. It is going to be about three hours long. Um, and we'll, we'll watch the, the final together. And I was expecting like three or four kids to show up. At the end of school, I had a meeting. So I went to the meeting and there was a, a furious kind of knock on the door at one point. And this student, she came and she's like, you, you have about 50 kids like outside your door. Um, and I was like, oh my gosh. So I ran to my room and these kids, like they all piled into my room and they sat, they were not on their phones and they sat and they sang along. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of students will take the class a lot of students who struggle academically who struggle with other classes who have never found history accessible they come to this class and they thrive i think it should be taught around the world a lot more or in the united states like i got a lot i took a lot from the class i think one of the things that has been inspiring and really amazing about the Eurovision, Eurovision class is just like the sense of community that it creates. I had one student come to me um, some, some time ago and, and said to me, Mr. Quigley, I'm really like, I feel really bad for the kids who don't get to take your class because they, we, we create a community. And I think I was aware of that on a much larger scale when in 2020 the contest was canceled. And I remember being like sadder than I, I think at that point I was like, there's, there's something more. This is not just a song contest. This is not, we can't just dismiss this, you know, as, as I know people do, we can't dismiss it as a song contest because it does, even if it is just for one night a year, it does bring people together. And I see that on a very micro level in my classes where there are students in my classes who do not get along otherwise, but they come into my room and we, we have this common purpose, um, we have this common appreciation. And even if it is just, again, the same with Eurovision, you know, you have this one night a year where we all get along in the same, in the same way in my class, the kids would come and they would get along. The eight finals. One. Um, and I think as well, just kids beginning to like last year, you know, the the students here were obsessed. I think the number the big the the number one song for them um, was Moldova. I think they were obsessed with Moldova. And again, students here we are in this school in rural Vermont. And kids acknowledging the existence of Moldova and bonding over it and seeing kids in the hallway who maybe in different grades or different ages, different academic abilities, but having this common interest is um, is huge, particularly, you know, I think increasingly in a world that is, you know, as cliche as it is, as it sounds, but in a world that is so just divided and people were so, div so divisive. We do have this thing that, that, that unites us. Um, so, really excited and privileged to, to be able to talk more about this with you in Liverpool very soon. Any thoughts on who you think might win? France. France? I think Sweden might have a good chance. France and Sweden. I hope Italy wins. But you're hoping Italy. Um, thank you both very much. Of course. Austria doesn't really win a lot, <laughs> and I don't. I don't have hope for them. <laughs>